All right. Well, a couple basketball games have happened since the last time we recorded. Yes. Wichita State on, what was it, last Thursday, I believe, and then Cincinnati on Sunday. Thoughts? Um, They've righted the ship in a lot of ways. I yeah. feel good about where they're at, man. Like, I... I after that Temple game, and by the way, the Temple win on the road with that last second shot by Kendrick Davis looks better now that they beat Houston. Yeah. Um, but I think defensively they're a little more locked in. They covered the three-point line against Cincinnati really well. And and they handled both of those games just sort of from start to finish comfortably, and they were relaxed, and they played within themselves, didn't turn the ball over too much, did some good things. So I... I feel as if they are back on track. Yeah. Was that the best two game stretch of the season, you think? <sighs> not from not from quality necessarily, but just from like the product that was yeah, on the Yeah, no, I, I I think so. I think so. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think I think the Cincinnati game was arguably the best game they've played all year. The most complete yeah. game yeah. that they've played all year, both ends of the floor. And can we talk about DeAndre Williams? He's yes. was named AAC, AAC player, player of the week, week. twenty nine and what? 15 against Wichita State and 26 and eight and eight against, against Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, last week we were kind of like DeAndre's been part of the inconsistencies. We were like, it's Kendrick Davis and then everyone else is inconsistent. And DeAndre Williams has had easily the best two games of, this, of his season and kind of turned it around. 12 and one when he doesn't foul out, two and four when he fouls out. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, it's not that complicated no, when it comes not. to DeAndre. Like, I, I have gotten to the point, and I've said this like the past two weeks, if you look in the minutes column and he's playing 33-plus minutes, you can go ahead and chalk it up as a W. Yeah. And, and, and people will talk about, okay, well, what's he doing scoring the ball? What's he doing rebounding? Is he playing good defense? I think all of that follows if he just plays within himself and, and stays on the floor. And it was yeah. kind of funny in that Cincinnati game. He just he didn't foul the entire game until ten minutes left in right. the in the second half. And and then he just he did, man, he unloaded the clip yeah. going and foul. He ended up with four in that last ten minutes. But he was on the floor for thirty five minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if you see that on his stat sheet, chances are the Tigers had success. Yeah. Did did you uh, you kind of mentioned earlier that they've both been pretty comfortable? So you never felt. You never felt like it could have went the other way against so, Cincinnati. There was a moment when it was fifty to fifty when they tied it at 50. where I was sitting there and I'm saying, "Okay, let's Here see what go. the Tigers do to respond." Yeah. And they responded. They pulled away again. Yep. So and that I, one, that was Kendrick Davis. Yeah. That's when Kendrick Davis started to take over and play well and was just driving and getting fouled every time and he hit a couple shots also. So. But what we were talking about a week ago at this time was okay. What are they going to do with rebounding? They seem to have figured that out. The the Last two games, they've won in the rebounding department. And defensively, what are they going to do in covering the three-point line? Cincinnati was a 36%, one of the best in the conference. The best in the conference. The Number best one in the conference. 36% conference. from three, and in that first half held them to one for 13. Yep. And and that's something in the past that we have grown accustomed to with the Penny Hardaway coach team. But that team, this team this year, hadn't neutralized the opponent's sort of best attribute yep. yet. Like when, when Kendrick Davis was at SMU, the conversation going into those games was, okay, what are they going to do to neutralize Kendrick Davis? And generally speaking, they did. They pretty much shut him down every time. And it feels like against Cincinnati, they got back to that. And and they have righted the ills that we thought were yeah. going to be lasting. And I will say, and I, I'm, this is going to sound like kind of a shot, and it's not, but like Cincinnati, Cincinnati is a good team a solid team yeah they don't really have a standout star player like Landers Nolly is their leading scorer David DeJulius is I like is, Jeremiah Davenport I like too. Jeremiah Davenport so they have good players Victor Locken's pretty good too yeah, yeah he had a really good game but they don't you know what I mean like they don't have Kendrick David like they don't yeah. have a they don't have a, a top tier player like each in game America. it'll be a different guy exactly which I mean you can win that I'm not saying you can't win that way they, they have been a solid team for the majority of the year, but they didn't have like that standout guy that Memphis had to lock down. And like you mentioned, going one of 13 from three in the first half, they did get some open looks, but they just couldn't hit anything. And then I think if you're watching that game, you kind of feel like you're going to have to weather the storm at some point because they're not going to go two of 26 for the game. And they did hit a few in the second half, knotted it up at 50. And then like we talked about, Memphis responded really well. So that was the only 
a little bit of hesitant moment of like, oh, it's right. going to flip the other way. But six for 24, you can say, okay, Cincinnati had a tough game shooting the three ball. I thought the Tigers did a better job of Absolute, playing absolutely. their damn man and stopping with the overhelping and stop. They did a better job closing out and covering the three point line. And that's what happens. You you hold a team that's 36% shooting to 25. Yep. And that's how you win ball games. Yep. Yeah. Completely agree. So, what is it? Like, what, what are we seeing that's making this happen? Like, why is Memphis looking smooth? Like, what what is the what is the key to it? I, I think it's getting used to who you're playing with. And yeah. I think the rotations are controlled. Um, and, and Penny's done a good job with that. And it's just, it's just I, you can tell those guys have a response to them because they know this is their last go, and they don't want to – keep dealing with the same problems that they've been dealing with when they're losing ball games, when they're playing really close with Temple, when they're losing to Tulane, when they're losing late to UCF. They don't want to keep dealing with those issues. So it feels like they, they – and obviously I, I haven't been at practice, so I can't fully speak on this, but it feels like they're locking in and, and doing the things that they know are shortcomings in their game. Yeah, and I think Kenny, you know, Kenny pointed this out to me that Keontae and Elijah McCadden are kind of – the engine that makes this team yep. move. Like, uh, obviously, it's been said ad nauseum. Kendrick and DeAndre, we all know that. Like, let's get that out of the way for the 3,000th time. <laughs> but, like, right. uh, Elijah and Keontae are very important pieces on this team. And when they play well, when they play fast, when they play good defensively, and when they hit shots when needed, because the, Memphis doesn't need them to take 10 to 15 shots a game. They need six to eight shots maybe from both of them, and they need them to be efficient. And when they are and they're playing good defense, that's when Memphis well, looks like they're a much better team. And those guys are helpful with rebounding and distributing, and and they've done a good job with that. And um, I, the only shortcoming right now that's very glaring, like Victor Locken had twenty two and ten, they need Malco back yeah. in a big way. And and like I, I know the positivity that was around Ko in the preseason, seven foot or 6'11", whatever he is, long, can block shots. He's athletic. He can touch the top of the backboard when he jumps up. Yeah. He doesn't provide enough. Enforcer. When it comes to being an enforcer and playing the opposing teams big and rebounding too. I mean, you have you have guards, Keontae, Kendrick, uh, Elijah, out-rebounding him consistently – on the floor, and I know there was a point in the, especially in that second half of the UCF game, because I thought that was probably Ko's best, you know, some of the best minutes he's played all year. There was some frustration from the fan base talking about, well, why isn't he out there for the second half? Penny gave his explanation. He was like, oh, okay, they were playing smaller, they had guards out there. We didn't think that he fit, but Ko's got to provide more in the way of being a traditional big man if he wants to get extended minutes. And I don't blame Penny for starting him for five minutes and then pulling him out and not playing him. Like I. Until he shows the ability to consistently be a force, to be strong, to play big, I, I don't know. I don't know if those minutes are going to be there for him. Yeah, and I will say part of the Victor Lock and stuff. Penny said it after the game that it was part of the game plan. It was understanding personnel. And actually, me and Kenny like jumped on the phone as soon as the game ended. And I was like, you know, the one big thing obviously was Victor Lock and just having his way down low, but it looked like. They were kind of doing it on purpose. It was almost and let Ken, him. And Kenny was like, ah, that's what I think, too. I think they were just trying to funnel everything to him. And then, you know, Penny kind of confirmed that. And it makes sense because, as we've mentioned, Cincinnati is the number one three-point shooting team in the American. That's the way they want to play. They want to shoot a lot. They've got a lot of guys that can shoot from the perimeter. They're not afraid to shoot 33s in a game. Uh, and so neutralizing that and making them use Victor Locken, who's solid but nothing spectacular – it worked. 